Hey, are we live? Hey, everybody. Adam Savage here in my cave for a live stream. Happy Friday before Halloween. I think a lot of people are going to parties tonight and tomorrow night, although Sunday is Halloween. Uh, if you are around the Mission District on Halloween, you may see me in costume. That happens from time to time. Um, but welcome, everybody. Today's uh, live stream is sponsored by KiwiCo. KiwiCo makes kits and toys that engage kids in STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. Uh, I built their ukulele last year. Today on the live stream, I'm going to build their tilt and fold desk. And while they have just a host of wonderful builds, and this may sound to you like maybe one that's a little more boring. I actually have a really specific reason that I'm building this one because I find the idea of a small dedicated space for drawing super, super exciting. Um, also, as part of this sponsorship, there is a special offer. If you go to kiwico.com slash tested, you can get up to not up to, you can get 50% off your first month of any of their subscription crates. Uh, Let's get started. I don't need any tools because everything I could possibly need is right here in the kit. I love that part of this stuff. Okay, here we go. The tilt and fold desk. This is a picture of what it's going to look like. That is awesome. I literally, I just, I picked this from a list because I love the idea of a specialized desk. Um, I have a friend who's an artist who has a specialized drawing desk right next to his bed. Seriously, and the goal for him every morning is to pick up something and draw something instead of picking up the phone. I don't know how successful he is at this enterprise, um, but I love the ethos of that. Mm. Okay, so uh, the tilt and fold desk. Let us uh, let us begin. Some wonderful little patent drawings. There's a little history. Uh, okay, I think I'm gonna have to stand for this, Norm. You wanna just pan, tilt up? Oh, right, you can't tilt up. Oh, I need to sit down. Yeah, we can't do it, we have to do it all. <laughs> this is, we're working this out as we go. All right, let's, um, let's pull stuff out. Great. If I have a oh, I don't even need a blade nearby. That opens so easily. Zip ties and elastic. You can do tremendous things with those two items. Here are some of their Chicago screws and a screwdriver. Ooh, plus some very, very gentle little plastic washers. Clearly, some detailed parts that are important. I'm not sure why just yet, but we will find out. Let's go there, and then the bulk of everything in this box here. Oh. This very faint odor of burnt wood when you have laser cut wood. KiwiCo does an excellent job at their post-processing of this. So there's no, sometimes when you laser cut wood, you end up with uh, uh, like, yeah, you can get ash or, or, or carbonized wood on your fingers. They do a terrific job at not letting that happen with their constructions, obviously. Um, okay, let's just uh, familiarize ourselves with the pieces. Oh, right, they're all, yeah, all right, that goes there. Those, that, there's, there's lots of pairs. And then this trio. Okay. Silica, do not eat. However, I'm going to take a sip before we go. Mm. That is that. Okay, step one, four slots. The angled edge on the bottom right. Oh, before you start, keep an eye out for orientation notes. Okay, so that is that. And then there are, ah, there are clearly two types of paper rivets or Chicago screws, as you might refer to them. And they want me to grab the short one and put it through this hole here. 
And then I'm going to put that through. Where is it? Aha. Uh -huh. No, not that. It's this. This is the one with the slot in it. So there's lots of pieces that look similar to each other. And they actually call out the slot. That's how you know. Okay, so that goes to that. And the edges line up. Great. And now it says grab the shorty end of that and put that together. Okay, I can see it's sitting just a little bit proud. So these pieces, we will um, actually spin against each other. And they included a little screwdriver, a little stubby. That is awesome. I've recently come to a significant point of view on the screwdriver and the art of the screwdriver. I've discovered my favorite screwdriver. No, I'm not telling you about my favorite screwdriver just yet. Because I, I want to make sure I get a complete collection. They're very rare. They're hard to find, and I, I don't want to. I don't want to sully my own search parameters on eBay. <laughs> ah, all right. Oh, oh. If the bolt sticks up above the wood, add washers to match the height. That is why there are these thin plastic washers. So I do feel a little bit of rattly. So I think I'm going to include at least one washer. Put that around there. Put that there. Throw that through there. And that looks almost dead flush, but I'm going to add another washer because, well, if I get a little bit of preloading on there and it's stiff, it's, uh, it might help me later. Every time I'm building one of these kits, I'm thinking of the team that put it together. And having been part of teams for a building toy company, like, I'm semi-aware of how much labor and data and like just uh intense thought processes go into making something like this and then making sure that it is buildable like testing it repeatedly asking lots of different people to build it watching them build it see where they run into trouble i'm sure they're doing versions of all of this uh okay step four is just like steps one to three but flipped the other way so still again we use this one with the slot we use this one with this. We're going to use the shorty screw. Yes. And I think we're going to do the same washer business because we have the same issue, which is that the plywood, is uh, the Chicago screw sits a little proud of the plywood. A uh, thing about sheet materials that is really fascinating is how inconsistently they are, um, how inconsistent their thickness can be. Uh, when you're buying acrylic, and it's supposed to be like quarter inch thick. I have found quarter inch thick acrylic to have a variance of up to like probably 20 or 30 thousandths, like a real significant amount, surprising amount. Um, we had to accommodate for that a lot when we were laser cutting for movies at Industrial Light and Magic. I mean, actually, anybody who operates a laser cutter has to accommodate for the varying degrees. And there are differences, right? Like the cast a, one of them and i can't remember anymore one either cast or uh extruded acrylic is more accurately uh thick but it's been so long i can't remember which one that feels like a loss feels like parts of my knowledge base are disappearing okay uh oh we're already moving on to elastic so take a piece of elastic and put a knot really close to the end they have drawn an overhand knot but I can't abide overhand knots. So instead of just doing a standard overhead knot of making a loop and then feeding the rope through the other side, I'm gonna feed it, I'm gonna twist it once more, a figure eight knot. This is not an instructional for the figure eight knot. Go look up a figure eight knot and then use it in place of every overhand you will ever tie for the rest of your life because the world needs more figure eight knots and less, over, less overhand knots. Okay. Oh, times two. Okay. So I'm grabbing the two shorties. Oh, 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 oh. I wasn't reading. I wasn't reading ahead. Now the other, the reason to use a figure eight knot over an overhand every single time is because an overhand knot, it's not a breakable knot. It, it, it's once it cinches, it's really hard to untie. And the key to a good knot is that it is untieable. And a figure eight knot, you can use its own, uh, uh, what do you call it? Its own topography aids you in untying it. 
my favorite in this vein is a bolin. Uh, a bolin is the most untieable knot there is, and yet the most secure. If you would only learn one knot, you'd learn the bolin. That's what I would recommend. Bunny goes in the hole, around the tree, back down the hole. The bolin is the soul of all great knots. Okay, uh, so that goes there, and this goes here, like that. And we put the we put the elastic through. They have cauterized the ends of it. They're really calling out these lovely specific details, like the spinny piece goes on the back. I appreciate that. Again, I really feel like that's kind of the only thing that comes, that, that sort of extra help comes from repeated, repeated attempts to build this thing. Okay, so let's see where are we at. We've got this piece with the slot here. Nope. Wait a second. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Okay, those two slots, that slot, that is this. Okay, and then this goes like that. Yes. Step seven. Okay, so I'm just grabbing this one. Wow, that's so fast. Middle slot on the side. So now I'm grabbing one of these three things, and it is this one. The middle slot there and the bevel side facing up. Thank you. They're calling out these little holes here that they have a bevel on one end. That's terrific. And so this goes all square corners. Yep. Wait. Us. Oh, I see. Gotcha. That goes there. All right. So now what happens? Well, now. Ah. Oh. Let's see. Now we have these long Chicago screws with a countersunk head. That's the head that's got a 60 degree uh, relief angle past its face so it can sink down to the surface. Uh, and again, if the bolts don't reach all the way to the top, that's on purpose. I got you right because you want to tighten it in. So that's the tall. Put that through there. We Put that through there. And we put that into there and we tighten it down. That is step nine, page nine. Okay, so I don't want to tighten that too much because I can see it's starting to split those apart and I don't want to over add tension that I'll have to remove later. So let's just level, there we go. Okay, that's level. What do we got here? We've got some foam, ah, some self-stick foam that is separated into eight pieces. And we've got this little, this guy here, and it wants a piece of foam in its middle. So we're going to peel off one of these self-stick foams and put it right here, roughly in the middle. It does not tell you to measure and they don't include any kind of guide. So I don't imagine it is super mission critical that it is perfectly centered. That is centered enough. Ah, okay. So then this guy comes in here and oh, oh, no, it faces in. All right. If it doesn't fit, loosen the screw. No, it does fit. And it comes in and goes. Come on, come on. There you go. I knew you wanted to get in there. Slide into the notch. Okay, so that is slid into the notch. Ah, now I'm doing the same thing on the other side. So now we take this guy and that guy, and that goes in. Hopsa, right? Yeah. Yes. And then I'm going to, oh. Right, what happens on the other side? It goes, oh, I really didn't expect that. This goes here. Well, well, hell's bells, Margaret. It's been a while since I said that. Uh, okay, let's see here. So that goes in there and that comes, right, so that goes in there and then this slot fits there, yep. Yep, and then 
clearly I want this thing right up through the middle. Come on, there you go. And then I want the countersunk screw. I'm kind of guessing, yep, 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 okay, I'm right. I'm right, I'm right. Screw snug, not super tight. Terrific, terrific um, directions. Oh. What the hell? Wait a second. Ah, uh, okay. There we go. Yep. Here's a note. Every time screwing two things together, if it doesn't feel exactly right or easy, come back and try again. I think I almost cross-threaded that, which would have been bad. So I think that I have successfully done everything up to step 13. Oh, and now there's a lovely little article about plywood, one of my favorite materials of all materials, a king of materials. Corrugated cardboard and plywood might be my two favorite building materials. Okay. Oh, this is part B. We're now on step one of part B. Start on the left side. Thank you for that. And there is a piece. It is one of these little important pieces that was called out. And this goes in here. And right up, does it? Wait a second. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Poke through the hole. Try twisting. Oh, the bungee goes through the hole. Oh, okay. Okay. Got the bungee through the hole. Step two, great success. And now there is this piece. And these pieces, are those bilateral, yes, they are. Okay, I like that. So now, aha. Uh -huh. oh, God, I love tabs and slots so much. Oh, they're actually getting a reasonable amount of surface area out of this. So this comes down here like that and then that slot comes right up through this yeah i know it's all pronouns this that the other thing uh great oh now a longy that's a chicago screw with this countersunk well that's metric i can tell that uh okay so that comes up through there and oh 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 Ha-ha-ha-ha! <laughs> yeah, I was getting it wrong because I needed to pay attention to the bevel. And they made it clear. Right. Ow. Come on, set me free. That's it. The tolerance of this is nice and tight. Good, good tolerance on your plywood slots, KiwiCo. Well done. Come on. There. Yep. Yep. And down. Yes. And slot goes. Come on. That's it. Now we got it. Now we have it on a run. Now these are lovely. Chicago screws you guys are utilizing. They've got a great beveled back face. I really like them. Okay. Screw snug, not super tight. One more time. Okay. Moving on to step five. Same thing on the other side. This guy goes in here. Doop. The, the bungee goes through there. I'm going to retrieve it from the bottom so I can get it. And now this guy comes in and the bevels are facing up. Yes. And wow, I managed to even get the 
No, I got these backwards. That's fine, though. I am not going to undo this and redo it now, but there is one with a KiwiCo logo and, and one without. Uh, okay. And we're screwed down here. And we come up through, through the bottom. I can see it. Okay, step eight, moving on to step eight. So yeah, it is, you might be, like I said at the beginning that there's a really specific reason I wanted to do this build over any other. Uh, and that reason is because it's really important to have a, a, a space where you can safely fetishize your work. In every shop, there's a really specific place for the fetishization of work. And by that, I mean a kind of a place that is the locus of our concentration in working. For me, it's this bench right here. This bench gets the most abuse in this shop, but it's the thing I clean the most because I'm always attempting to come back to a, a stable and clean space with it. Uh, and I love the idea. Look, one of the biggest issues about making for most making disciplines is space, space to actually do your making. I mean, if you're a songwriter, then maybe all you need is a couch to sit down on with your guitar. But for a lot of making disciplines, space is the premium and it's the thing you need. And frankly, it's the thing that we often don't have in our late teens and early 20s. And so having a dedicated desk for doing it is really right, in my opinion. Okay. Step one, part C. We take this thing, which has two slots, and it's got a curve there and a flat there. And we're going to take the shorty. And I'm also going to just start doing this twice because I know I'm doing two halves of a one. It's also because I like jumping ahead. So we're just going to do this step twice bilaterally. I hope that I'm right. OK, uh, this goes there, and that goes there. Yep. If the bolt sticks up, add some washers. Oh, I think I will. I believe I shall. So let's put that. Put that there. Up through there. Down there. Get one more washer on there. Get the piece up top. It's a nice little stubby screwdriver, by the way. Look, the, we all have boxes and drawers full of different tools. And some of them are great and some of them are not so great. And some of them are super cheap. When you get free tools with stuff, frequently that's definitely part of the not so great. But honestly, KiwiCo's free tools, terrific. Uh, all right. Oh, I think I can just go with the... And again, I, this is a difference. I'm using two washers on this side and one on this side because even between these two pieces of plywood, there's a variance of, I mean, these washers aren't much greater than 20 thousandths of an inch thick at the most. Now I want to see how close I am. Hold on just a sec. Yeah, I know you were wondering, how good is Adam at estimating 20 thou with his eye? Okay. Yep, centered on zero. <laughs> ah, 20 thou. I nailed it. I, that is not something I prepped before the show. <laughs> Calibrated eyeball. All right. Whew, that was exciting. Uh, rotate freely, no wiggling. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. No wiggling. Um, Terrific. Uh, great. So now, oh, we're moving on from this one. We're taking this thing and we're putting it like this so that we can use this thing. Now, are these the identical? They are. So it doesn't matter which one it is. And I'm going to put this like that, right? And I'm assuming but I'm also, aha, uh -huh. okay. I need a little bit of space here. This comes in like this. 
Oh, wow. Oh, there's so many parts that have to work in concert with each other. All right, let's see here. I think. Do I think? Let's see. Let's see if I can. Uh... Oh, wow. There's all these things. This is really cool. So there's like multiple bits of slotting that all have to work in concert with each other. Um, oh, they've even included a little relief cutout for the Chicago screws. That's so thoughtful of you guys. Okay. All right. Come on. That's it. That's it. Yep. 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 We're almost there. Bingo. Ooh. Neato. Okay. Is there one more screw that I put in once I've done that? No. Feel free to flip the desk on its back if that's easier. Flat edge facing out. That's the system of checks. Terrific. Okay. Right. I'm assuming I'll add some bolts there in a minute. So let's do this one again. So here's how I worked this out. I... I work this out. I'm following directions. It's not like, uh, okay. So this goes like this. This comes in here like this. And then this guy comes in here like this. And also comes up under here like this. Uh huh. Oh, it is a lot easier to put it on its back. Thank you. Excellent. All right. So I've jumped ahead. Well, we still have these ends sticking out. <laughs> and now it's time for the second one of these. Right. And it goes right just like that. So how do they, I guess you just got to kind of make it work. Yeah. All right. Oh, wow. Yeah. Lots of interrelated chunks and pieces. Come on. Okay. Let's. Mm. That's what's in there. This is not cooperating just yet. Yeah, I can see it's off. There we are. Now you're cooperating. Oh. One of, um, whenever I was laser cutting stuff at Industrial Light and Magic, one of my goals, and this is not an important goal, but it still was a goal repeatedly, was to only, was always to, let's see this. If you were laser cutting a bunch of pieces that had the tab and slot together, the goal was get it right on the first try. Not that important, but it really was fun to try. It was rare that I succeeded, but it was a nice goal to have. Okay. Oh, oh. So now that that's in, I can put in two of these. And they want me to put it in the, the outside one. We'll do that there. And we'll do this one on the other side. Yeah, because I'm jumping ahead over steps. Uh, I'm jumping over steps uh, seven, eight, and nine because I've already done those. Because I did both pieces at once. These both, oh, it's really neat. All right, let's put this up. Pop that in, screw it down. There's one, not super tight, per the instructions. This feels actually really quite nice and um, robust, frankly. It's got a nice solidity to it. Uh, now, Dun, 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 dun. Did those, did those. Okay. So now it's time to add two more of the large Chicago, Chicago screws. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, two, three. One. And two. 
two. Yeah, so now I'm also, you know, I'm cognizant that they didn't just like, there's also probably like 40 different versions of this desk that they tried all sorts of different construction methods on. Ah, the iterative process, it's what's for breakfast. Um, okay. Um, one really good rule of thumb is when you start to put a screw into a thread, uh, if it's a little bit rough at first, just immediately back out and go right back in and you probably find your correct slot. Oh, now there's an article about laser cut wood. So you understand precisely how this thing was built. I will tell you, like, including that is so much more to me than just like filling out material about the build itself. I'll tell you as a maker, as an engineer, as a, a, a maker of things, one of the ways in which I relax is I sit and I think through how something was constructed. So like I'll sit in date, I, I saw a show at Davies Symphony Hall and uh, it was Joshua Bell. I wanted to see Joshua Bell and I'm sitting there alone and the, I mean, I didn't have someone with me. So I'm sitting there alone in the theater and I'm waiting for the show to begin since I don't have a, a date. I'm there stag. I'm just sitting there looking at the whole place and I'm sitting there thinking about how each piece was constructed, how the the clear, I think, polycarb or acrylic panels they have for reflecting sound up on the ceiling were were made and how that RFP went out and who built those and how they delivered them. And then I think about the sprayed concrete. I think about the upholstery on the chairs. I think about the etching on the numbers on the backs of the chairs. So KiwiCo, including exactly how the kit I'm building was built and the processes that were used for that, that's exactly right. Okay, bungees are on the close side. We have it on its back and these legs but fold and lock them in place. So we are going to use um, one. Uh, there's two of these, and one has a little symbol over here, and we're using that one. Oh, right. We're using this one. And so triangle up here, and this bungee goes in through here. Yep. Yeah and want a knot there. I see, it's tight. Again, I'm going to do a figure eight because I think I can, and it's true, I can. Yay, figure eights. All right, and then this thing. Oh, oh. Oh, wow, oh. <laughs> my, my, my people at KiwiCo, that is a really nice bit of engineering. I really like how that feels. Okay, maybe just some candle wax, but sure. That is a really nice little mechanical thing going on. Uh, and that, right? That's really neat. Uh, yep. Uh, oh, I screwed up. I screwed up. The bungee should be tied the other way. But no matter, for I have used a figure eight. And as I explained before, the figure eight is a breakable knot. If I had done this with an overhand knot, I'd be pissed. All right. So it comes in this way. And I'm going to guess the other one operates the same way, but I'm just going to scout ahead. All right. <laughs> you get my expression? Norma's taking a photo there. Is that for the thumbnail for later? Yeah. All right. YouTubers, don't ignore that thumbnail. All right. <sighs> Great, figure eight. Now we flip that back over and get this guy going through here. Come on. Oh, and I got it wrong one more time because I meant for the 
Bungie to go over the back of it. They really have it very specifically placed. Oh, and it's even supposed to go in that little slot. Nice. I'll show you what I mean by that little slot in a second. There we go. Yeah, it's the back of this has a little notch to receive the bungee. That is awesome. Okay, and it's the same on the other side. Yeah. All right. Yes. So if it goes like this, it comes out through here. Come on. Uh, sometimes with the heat bonding of the end of the bungee, it gets a little bit mushroomed out, so you may have to spin it a little bit. They make that recommendation in here. I stand by that recommendation. Uh, it's definitely how to get it through. And now let's get this figure eight tied. Come on. Come on. Excellent. So now that goes through that little slot. And this comes around to here. And goes through there, and nice. Okay. That's in, that's in, that's step six. I managed to, okay, cool. And get the bungee into the groove. We got into the groove. Now, stop and check. So we pull these so that that folds, and that folds. That's great. And they asked me to flip it over and put in some pieces. Oh, oh, it actually locks in a folded position. That's great. So we're going to put two pieces here and here. Okay. Of the foam. And this, I think, helps it have some more rigidity when it is fully assembled. They have you line up the foam with the corner here. Great. Same thing over here. I love self-stick foam. I used to have a loft space down on Yosemite Street in Bayview from Darkoid Rubber, which is no longer where it used to be. But they were a company that made stuff out of like die cut and uh, cut out self-stick neoprene foam rubber. And so their dumpster supplied me with like self-stick foam circles for Decades, decades. I still have a box of neoprene foam circles up there that I bought from dark that I pulled out of the dumpster at Darkoid Rubber in 1992. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so those pieces of rubber are on there. Assemble the legs. So we'll flip it back on its back. Flip it back on its back. Open it up. Oh. That is really neat. Um, and here are the legs. So they come to the outside. Yeah, it's always worth looking at both sides of the piece of plywood because like this one's got some marks here and usually when they manufacture plywood, they'll make one face just slightly better than the other. Uh, and so I'm just choosing these two faces to go out, out that. And that right so we put a shorty go shorty uh if the bolt sticks out add washers i am adding washers just assuming i'm making an ass out of me and umption yes if you have not seen the samuel jackson gina davis david morse brian cox film the long kiss goodnight you really should watch it it's great one of my all-time favorite action movies. Okay, so. Yes, yes. Oh, no, it goes the other way. It goes from here on out. And this one goes like that. And I think we'll also throw a washer there on the outside because I want it to be a little, little tighter. Yep, I'm jumping ahead. I'm doing both legs at the same time. That's just because I'm impatient and I always work ahead. Oh. Let us see if we can make this work here. And 
nice. It's a great fit. And this one, over there, I think it's just tight enough. But like I said earlier, look, space is going to be, I mean, I love pointing out that my definition of making is as broad as it can possibly be. Making is anytime you use your point of view to make something that didn't exist in the world. That's it. That's all that it is. However, for the specific type of make, and so that could be like a song or a dress or a bed or a drum or a government, whatever you want to make. Um, however, for me personally, um, the kind of making that I do and we talk about on this channel requires some space. And again, I recognize that for a lot of you, space is at a real premium. You might not be in an apartment that's big enough to do big things. So a little fetishizable like desk kind of thing like this. It's great. I'm really, I'm a big fan of it. All right. So now that those are in and they rotate freely with no wiggling, step three of part E, here we go. We have this piece with the arrows. We'll wait for one second to yeah. catch up on the buffering. We're getting a little bit of a slow internet connection. Copy that. Mm. We are apparently having a slow internet connection. So we're just waiting for the buffering to catch up. Okay. Should I stop? Um, hold on one second. Wi-Fi went down. Our Wi-Fi went down. Well, that's bad. Uh, yes. One second. Let's see. It is back. Thank you guys for your patience. We're good. We're good. Excellent. <laughs> I heard like the sound of someone behind me and I'm like, uh oh. Uh, okay. Hold on the bottom. This is clearly. Oh, this is the mechanics for the legs. I love it. So that, like that. And this comes in here. Oh, zip ties here to secure this. Oh, that's really neat. So, right. So the zip tie, there's a little notchy poo here on top and bottom, and the zip tie will go in that once it's gone through here. And I suspect, yeah, the long bungees will figure into this too. And now, that is great. I'm going to go ahead and do it on the other side. Again, because I'm impatient and I like looking ahead. So a key part in the carbonated soda, it's going to yield some burps. Mm. I'm really, I apologize just a little bit. <laughs> oh, great. I'm also, uh, yeah. Trim. 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 I will trim it, but I'm going to need a tool that's not in the Kiwi Co. box. But I figure a pair of scissors is about the lowest possible threshold for something that every household would have. Here we go. That's it. We are trimmed. Uh, yes. Okay. Now it's time for the bungees. And... Again, a knot really close to the end. And once again, I'm going to do a figure eight knot. Apologize, I keep talking about knots. I'm not showing you how to tie, but again, just Google figure eight knot and let your life be changed by its simplicity. I once had a book on knots, actually I probably still do in my collection, that the opening sentence of this book is, the overhand knot has caused more damaged equipment and deaths than any other knot in history. So I really try to never use the overhand. Okay. So we have our tied bungee. It goes through that hole. Okay. Am I right? Nope. It comes through that hole from here. From here. And it goes through this little hole here. I see. Okay. So there's a hole here. And it goes through that. 
Come on. This is again the mushrooming issue with the with this little bungee. That's it. Got it through. And then back out through this little hole. Okay. Now. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Okay, so uh, we tie another knot in the end of this with the of the bungee. And then we bring it up through here and it gets stopped there. And the same thing here, this one. Ooh, a little bit of pressure. That one gets up through there. That's neat. Okay, so now the bungee is holding this here so you can actually adjust the angle. Oh, that is great. I see now what I must do. Uh, it is time to add in the other piece of bungee. And I'm just, I'm, I'm, now that I know how it's done, I'm not going to follow directions. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to start by putting it through that hole and that hole. Do the same thing over here. And then tie a couple knots. Ah. Uh, excellent. And that one goes in there. Boink. And this one comes around here and goes through there. Boink. And this slot also. The, the one thing I might add to some of this is the idea of uh, paraffin wax as a lubricant. Like when your drawers get stuck, you can add a little bit of uh, candle, just rub a candle on the drawer slides. And that would also likely help some of the motion of some of the parts of this kit. So we got the bungee on. Now we're doing the bungee on the other side. So I'm now skipping steps 12, 13, uh, oh yeah, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, because they're all the same. And now we're stopping and checking for both of the bungees, make sure have the same tension. Uh-huh. Actually, you hear that? We're not making a ukulele like I did last time, but you hear the difference in those two. This is under higher tension, so I'm gonna pull it this way, and I'm gonna try and adjust that until they sound the same. Oh. Good enough. Um, okay. Now that we've stopped and checked, step 19 is this part right here. Now, what happens there? Oh, oh, push in hard. And when I do that, it's done. Okay. So how do I, what am I, what am I, what am I looking at here? Aha. Uh -huh. I see. Oh, that first piece of foam I put in there, this is meant for this thing as part of its, right. That little, that first little bit of foam I add, it's just a little bit of tension on this, keeping it where it is. Okay. Wow. We're, 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 we're done. Okay. So let's see here. How does, let's see how this thing works. Um, to change position, pull up the locking tabs, oink, and adjust to whatever position you want. Um, I have to say, from an engineering perspective, that is really swanky. That is a nice bit of design. I'm not sure why you would draw like this, but if you want to, you can. But that's great. You just lift up this on either side, doop, and it finds its slots really nicely. That's awesome. And the locking position is right there, and I can do that. And I can put a piece of paper there, and I can draw on that piece of paper. Uh, okay, wait, let's see. Oh, right, let's see about folding it up. 
to close the legs, uh, right, I think we want to go to the center position to close. And then we, we pull these into the center and close and close. And they actually lock in position. You may have to push the legs apart. Okay, so wait a second. So, now that it is to open the legs, lift up the desk and squeeze the levers. What? What? They're spring-loaded? <laughs> that I knew that the bungees here were allowing me to adjust the, the, the attitude, but I did not realize that they were spring-loading the legs. That is freaking, that makes me very happy. Okay, come on. There we go. So this is locked. So we pick this up and we... Oh. <laughs> I'm ready for drawing. Um... Are the levers blocking? If the leg levers are blocking each other so you can't do both legs, slide one of the levers back and release the legs one at a time. If you're building and a piece doesn't fit... Don't be afraid to push it hard. If the leg hinges aren't working light, check steps A3, A4, C2, and C7. That's great. There's literally a whole double page spread of troubleshooting. Um, and then they have their behind the design, the science of stretch and the bungee cords. I really really love this uh yeah there we go there is your drawing desk they included a couple of extra bungees and three extra pieces of self-adhesive neoprene gray foam you can never have too many zip ties zip ties is one of the i think one of the most important expendables we have here in the cave uh and yeah you really get uh you can this is a lovely a lovely writing surface um let's see here uh, what? I literally just misspelled the word thanks. Hold on. There we go. Let's see here. Um, once again, I remind you that there is a special offer uh, for watching right now, or if you go to kiwico.com slash tested, you can get up to 50 percent. Not Why do I keep saying up to? As if I'm an infomercial. No, no, no. Go to kiwico.com slash tested and receive 50% off of your first month of any subscription crate KiwiCo sells. Um, I have had a lot of fun building this, and I hope you have had the same watching it. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Adam Savage at KiwiCo. Um, keep making and stay safe for joining me what a pleasure this has been and what an great day adam out <laughs>